We've toured a lot of luxury homes on this channel. Today we're at a ordinary home with extraordinary automations. Guys, you're gonna be absolutely amazed by some of the automations that Pete has set up in his house. Uh, and he did all of this for under $2,000. He's really layered in a lot of different conditions to the automation. So they worked uh, based on like time of day and what you're doing in the room. Uh, it's really cool. And at the end, he's gonna show you how he did everything. So let's go check it out. My name is Pete, I work for Hubitat. Uh, we're a home automation company. We have the Hubitat Elevation Home Automation Hub and uh, it's very capable, Z-Wave, Zigbee, all, all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna sh just show you what it's capable of here in my house. All right, so out here we've got uh, LifeX bulbs. They're connected to the Hubitat. And uh, the cool thing about this is I pre-programmed all of our holidays, right? So every day at the time it turns on, it checks, is it, you know, Valentine's Day, it'll turn them red. Is it St. Patrick's Day, a green? Arbor Day, it'll turn them green. All the holidays, but if it's not a holiday, it just turns them white. And that's just one of the cool things. You set it and forget it. We got the ring doorbell here. You know, it's nice, got the camera and everything else. And then we've got the quick set lock here. This is connected to Hubitat. Through the Hubitat Lock Code Manager program, you can program lock codes for all my kids, all my family members. You can also set codes for like one-offs or special days. And I did that for Brandon right here. Brandon, you've got your own code just for today. All right. right? What, it's what it's a tough it? one. It's one, two, three, four. Whew. Let's see what happens. Minnesota. He's a really good guy, Dan. He keeps starlights and other days. And current host of Smart Home Tours and the former school mascot of the St. Cloud State Huskies. Put your hands together for Brandon Doyle. So this rule triggered only with his special lock code. So only when the one, two, three, four was entered in the code is it going to play that. For anyone else, it was not going to not going to play anything. So this is a switch. Um, it controls the kitchen lights. There, it's a dimmer, so you hold it up. You know, it gets brighter. It's a three-way switch. So actually over here, what do you call it? we put in a Lutron Pico switch. So this is actually just wired uh, straight up as if there's no switch in there. And then this is just a button controller. It's wireless and you can set that to do the same thing. And you can add other features to it as well using the, using the Hubitat. So we've automated our piano. And uh, not only does the light go on, but if you want to show the bottom, I don't play piano. <laughs> so, if you can get more, it goes with the, with the notes you play. So uh, the more you play, the flashier it'll get. This light here is plugged into a Zigbee plug right there. That's a central light plug. So underneath the piano is a Gobi LED strip that when you play music, it changes to the beat. There's a whole bunch of different settings you can use there. And based on this motion sensor right here, this is a third reality motion sensor. They're really cheap and readily available, um, work pretty well. So whenever someone sits down, that motion sensor will turn this light on and then it says, hey, get the LED strips ready to go. And then once you play, the LED strips do their thing. The uh, piano LEDs will also work with my uh, son's accordion, if I can figure out how to play it here. <laughs> this is a central light door sensor right here. Hubitat has this uh, cool uh, app called Hubitat Safety Monitor, and you can program all different sorts of things for notifications and alerts. So we've got sensors on all three of our exterior doors, and then if you try to, if you arm it for a way and those open up, we've got different alarms set, and I can maybe show you that uh, later. So to scare off the bad guys, or you can get notifications on your phone, and uh, all sorts of cool things you can do by having sensors on your door. So this is just a Zigbee sensor. Um, I ch they're relatively affordable sensors, they're easy to find, but pretty much any Zigbee Z-Wave sensor is gonna work with the Hubitat, so you have lots of choices when it comes to contact sensors. This is the only non-local thing I have in the house. This is our, our Ecobee thermostat here, and uh, you can control it with your app, you can set automations for it, now Ecobee has, I just got this thing pretty recently, so I'm deciding am I gonna use the Ecobee, um, what are they called, EcoSense thing, yep. or Hubitat has their own ability to control the thermostats. And the Hubitat one's cool because I have all these sensors like you see, um, different temperature things throughout the house that I can use to help adjust the temperature. Ecobee has their own. Um, so I haven't really decided which way I'm gonna go, but the cool thing about leaking this with the Hubitat is that 
I can do certain automations based on when this thing is activated or not. So right now this is off because we actually have a really nice day here in Minnesota. But if I turn the uh, Ecobee system into air conditioning mode because it's so hot outside, um, that door is open there. So in two minutes, it's gonna give us a notification and say, hey, the door's shut. Door's open, you better shut that. We don't live in a barn. Shut the dang door. So <laughs> this is a Sono speaker right down here. So this is actually the uh, IKEA version, Symphonic Sono speaker. With Hubitat, I can send text-to-speech notifications. So anything I type in there, it's gonna say. And I can pick the voice too, because I picked that nice British guy, but uh, you can pick, I just think there's 40 different voices you can choose. Pretty much all the lights in our house are automated. Um, this is another central light motion sensor up there on top. And when I walk in the room right now, it's not gonna do anything because it's in day mode and we don't need lighting here. But if I were to do this at night, in the evening, it's gonna come on and later in the evening, it'll come on at a different color temperature. And if I come in here at say like two in the morning, when it's nighttime, it'll come in a really, really dim level and that's all pre-programmed. So you really don't need a switch, but we do have Another one of these, uh, these Lutron, Lutron Picos right here. There was not a switch here in this wall. These are just lamps. So what we got here, we've got Hue bulbs in each of these three lamps. These are the Hue white ambient lights and you can set them for color temperature, for dim level, all that sort of stuff. For these Pico remotes here, you can set different actions for what you do with the remote. So there's different action for just pressing it, um, for holding it, and then for double tapping. It, uh, I do three different things for each one of these five buttons. So it's actually like 15 buttons in one. Uh, so we got the Ecobee thermostat here, and then we've got this ugly thing here that I don't even know what it is. It's an air exchanger, but God, I, for the life of me, I want to automate this thing because it's just a stupid knob that I never remember to set. And I, my goal in life is to find something or do something myself to automate the air exchanger that I swear nobody actually needs. My wife hates it. Eh, I'm okay with it, but we are actually getting a new kitchen soon. So there's not a whole lot of automation here. I've got one sensor up here, lets you know when you're in the kitchen, which will turn these lights on here at night. They're on right now just for purposes. Um, but uh, I've also got this door is automated right here. So if you open it up, the lights go on. By the way, I did this myself. I'm very proud. That was my gift to my wife was uh, some new shelves in the, in the kitchen there. Um, but we've got another central light door contact sensor right there. And then this is a, then we have an ultra pro switch. It's made by Jasco. It's a pretty affordable option. Jasco products are just great. They're, they just work. They're solid. Um, this is a Z wave. Uh, they've got uh, Zigbee as well. So, um, yeah, I just really like the Jasco products. I just find them to be just very reliable. All right. This switch right here, this is a Leviton switch. They had it on sale at home Depot, pretty good value. works pretty well. Um, it controls our deck patio light out here. And uh, I've also got the sensor here. So it's automated. Uh, this is our deck light right here. It's wired to that Leviton switch in there. And then we've got a Hue outdoor motion sensor right there. So when I let the dog out, it senses the motion, it turns the light on, and then it'll stay on as long as either there's motion going on or until I open this door and shut it, that'll also turn off the light, right? So if the dog, it won't stay on after the dog comes in. Once it's open, it shuts it'll turn that light off. And uh, if for whatever reason those triggers don't work, uh, after a certain amount of time, they'll just go off with no, with no motion. All right, so here's our family room. We spent a lot of time in here. All the lights in here are automated. Um, primarily, we've got switches right here. Uh, these are actually Z, I know these are Z-Wave switches. Uh, Z-Wave and Zigbee connect directly to Hubitat Hub. It's local, so it's gonna work even when your internet's out. Um, we've got Wi-Fi, you can get Wi-Fi connectivity to. The Hubitat as well, and those are also local if they have a local API. I'll show you an example of that uh, down in the basement. But uh, so these switches here control the fan light and this entry light right here, and then this switch here. This is a dumb switch. This is just a three-way switch with the one over there. So that's just a dumb switch. And then this is the fan control right here. In addition to having buttons to control that, uh, we also have automated this. So if the air conditioner is off and the temperature in this room exceeds a certain level and there's motion in this room, that fan's gonna go on and stay on as long as somebody's in the room. Um, you can set modes in the habitat, so for day, for evening, late evening, night, whatever you want, and then the lights will adjust based on those times. Um, but if you want something manually instead of having to get up, we've got yet again another Pico remote right here. And each of these buttons controls a different light. Double tapping will do different scenes. 
So if you hold this button here, it actually turns on the fireplace. I, I put in a Z-Wave uh, relay in the fireplace down there. It allows you to control your fireplace. Instead of just the switch on the wall, it was not a wireless fireplace. So now it's wireless with this button. I can control it with Alexa or Siri or one of those. And we have different scenes that will automatically come on and off. And the cool thing about the remote tech, it's a remote tech relay and it has an automatic shut off that you can set. I've set it for 30 minutes because you just don't want the fireplace running forever uh, if nobody's home and you forget about it. So it'll automatically shut itself off after a certain amount of time, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool feature. So this is an Apple HomePod. Um, Hubitat is now HomeKit compatible, which is pretty cool. So I can control a lot of my devices just with my voice because it's just running from the Hubitat into the HomePod. If you're a HomeKit person, adding a Hubitat to your HomeKit expands your um, device compatibility exponentially. It allows you to connect Z-Wave and Zigbee devices that you can't just directly connect to your Apple HomeKit. So uh, a lot of people are really enjoying that feature. So you've probably seen all the oak in my house. Um, my wife really wants white. So I started by painting these cabinets, which was a big mistake because now she really wants everything in the house white. But I think it did a nice job. And in the process, we added these LED strips. These are Wiz LED strips right here. They are a Wi-Fi product, but they are compatible with Hubitat. Uh, local and they're compatible locally too. So it doesn't go to the cloud. It's directly controlled by the hub. And these are color LEDs so they can change colors. Uh, there's scenes you can have with them and they change color temperature, dim, dimness, all that uh, cool stuff. Um, now these are automated so at night they turn on at a certain time uh, based on the sunset and then throughout the evening they might change colors. Behind the TV I have an iris um, power plug that the TV's plugged into and it senses power. So whenever the power exceeds a certain threshold, it's gonna send a signal to the hub that will trigger an automation. So we have a TV mode automation. So when I turn this TV on, there we go. It turns into TV mode. So that's a little nice lighter blue. Also, if these lights were on, um, this light would have turned out, turn, this light would have turned off, that light would have turned off. Um, these would have stayed on, but you can still turn those off manually if you want. We also have a movie mode that turns all these lights off and all the kitchen lights off. If you press one of these buttons down there and again it does that same lighting in the background but uh, really have fun with those uh, LED lights. So here's my office. So this is an IKEA shelf and then on the back again I got more Wiz light strips. Um, I've just posted them on there myself and then there's three different strips and I have an automation that when I come into my room and there's motion it's gonna turn these onto a random color and then every minute it changes the color and then when motion stops for three minutes it shuts them off. This is an Innovelli switch right here. It's a Z-Wave switch. It's very cool. You can program the Innovelli switches to do a whole bunch of things based on how many times you tap it and whatnot. This is just uh, set to be a dimmer. And the nice thing about this, it's a three-way switch. So it works with a dumb switch on the other side. A lot of three-way switches, you need to have a, three, a smart switch and then an add-on switch. But this one just works with your old dumb switch on the other side. And um, so this one also you can turn to use a smart bulb with. A lot of switches you can't use a smart bulb with it. Um, you can just turn it on and off. This actually you can turn off the actuator inside. So it just basically turns it into a button controller and then you can use a smart bulb with your light. Um, I don't have that going on in this setup but it's a cool thing you do with the Innovelli. They've also got this light here that you can uh, program for different things. For me it just kind of goes brighter when the lights are brighter and then turns down when the lights dim. But uh, you can set it to change colors based on the weather or a whole bunch of different things. So here's my desk where I make all of the videos and do all my other work. Um, I was always liked the movies like the Bond villains that had cool buttons under the desk that like, you know, did things. Um, so I've got a button controller underneath my desk monitor right here that I can turn the lights to different, different scenes. So I can turn those off. I can turn them on to the color green. That's what we use for a lot of our videos is that green background. I can turn them white. Also, uh, sometimes the kids can get loud when I'm trying to shoot a video. So I've got a button here. Shut your yappers, dad is trying to record a video. <laughs> that lets them know it's time to quiet down. So I'm a Mac guy, so I've got a new Mac mini right there. Um, this is the first desktop I've had in like an exceptionally long time. I've usually used laptops, but for the price I was able to get that and this awesome monitor here, it's a, uh, color corrected Asus monitor, 32 inches. Like, I don't know how my life went on before I had that. It's, it's amazing. Um, so this is great for my video editing that I do, having nice, two big, nice screens. Um, when I'm doing recording, um, I can just pull this out here to do my voiceover. 
speaking to my mic, it's plugged in already. And I've got this camera here. This is a Fujifilm X-T4 that I use. Um, I mean, it's actually my Zoom camera when I'm doing Zoom meetings. Um, when I'm shooting uh, tabletop footage, I can just adjust this here and then lock that in a place like that. And we can do the down, down shots of the product. The Habitat Elevation Hub is essentially the brain of our home. It has Zigbee and Z-Wave radios that connect directly to all my devices. Plus it has a Wi-Fi connection to the router where it can connect to Wi-Fi devices and integrate with the Lutron SmartBridge Pro there and the Hue Bridge. Then I just use the built-in automation apps in my Habitat Elevation Hub to automate everything. It's all drop-down menus, no programming knowledge required, which is great because I'm a total dummy when it comes to that. Here's the key to light switches. Like you can automate them, but always have a switch. Like make sure the switch works. So if you know yeah. they're annoyed, they can still use a switch. And it just needs to be intuitive. Right. Off is on. Yep. Down is on. Yeah. Uh, dimming that type of thing can't switch it too much no like uh, you know i've got those buttons that you need to know what's going on in the other room but yeah. like the switches still work like if yeah. you're just confused you don't want the buttons the switches intuitive and you know what you're know what you're doing sometimes i'm working hard and i just need a golf break you can see i i like to golf so i have a hitting station in my garage that has a little heater with it so to get it warmed up i just hit a little button under here and it's going to turn the heater on and then if I leave five minutes later, it'll be a little warm and I can go out and hit some golf balls. I do have motion sensors right there and right there. And so it'll sense you coming down, it'll sense you going up and uh, it'll turn this light on and actually turns this light on down here. Um, except when the TV's on, when the TV's on, that light will not turn on because you don't need to turn that on. But if nobody's down here, that light's gonna come on to give you a little bit of a sense of where you're going. So we got Lutron switches here. We've got three Lutron dimmers here. Um, for the room, one for the table, one for that area, one for a ping pong table here. Um, you know, you can dim them, brighten them up. And then these are not automated to turn on when you come into the basement, so you can kind of choose what you want. But there is a motion sensor over there by the TV. We got a motion sensor right here that uh, it will sense if somebody's in the room. And if nobody's been in the room for like half an hour, we turn the lights off, is basically how that goes. So. So when you turn this on, we have the uh, ambient lighting that goes around the light. So when that turns on, those are gonna pop up. So this is our guest bedroom. Um, so when people stay in here, we've got the bathroom down here that I built myself. Uh, it's not great. Um, but we want people to be able to find the bathroom at night. And so there's a motion sensor right here that points down the hallway, right? So when someone comes out of the bathroom, out of the bedroom, it's gonna sense the motion and it turns these LED these are Hue LED strips here mounted underneath the cabinet. So it turns those on, it kind of gives you a guide into the bathroom. So I've got case TP-Link case of switches down here in the basement. These are Wi-Fi. Again, I'd recommend doing Z-Wave or Zigbee, but, uh, and I'd actually recommend if you're putting switches in, pick one you like and do the whole house with them. Because I work for Habitat, we kind of test a lot of things and I've got kind of a hodgepodge, but uh, okay, so they're all right. Um, they do connect with Habitat directly. Then when you walk into the bathroom here, the motion sensor here turns the light on and the light will stay on as long as either motion is happening here or if you shut the door, it will stay on as long as the door is shut, even if motion stops because you're sitting on the toilet a long time, and, you know, not moving, but uh, it'll stay on until you open the door again. Um, we've got a light here as well and a fan um, in the shower. So there's another motion sensor here that will sense when someone's in the shower and that will stay on, this fan and light will stay on as long as someone's, there's motion and for 15 minutes after motion stops to help clear all of the bad air out of the room. We also have humidity sensors in our two showers upstairs uh, to turn the fans on and off when someone showers. This is especially important in the kids' room because they never remember to turn their uh, fan on or off. So uh, the key to having a humidity sensor in a shower is that you can't just say when the humidity rises above a certain level, turn it on and then turn it off. You need to compare it to another humidity sensor in your house. So say when it gets above a level compared to a normal humidity sensor, turn it on and then you can either leave it on for a certain amount of time or until it comes back down relative to that other humidity. These are Govi <coughs> light strips and again, they sync to the music. So when he's yeah. playing music, it'll change colors and it's, uh... it's got different scenes. So I guess the automation we do have on this is I do have the lights turn off automatically at a certain time at night because he tends to fall asleep with them on and then he tends to leave them on again in the morning and we'll uh, 
turn that on, or it automatically turns off after it leaves for school. The light control right here, it's a dimmer, another GE dimmer, turns on, turns off, and then you can dim it as well to different levels. Turn that off. And then this is a, a Lutron fan control. So it controls the fan, obviously turn it on, turn it off, set different levels. But these switches don't get used very often, to be honest with you. So this switch will get used to turn the, to turn the light on, but usually then we go into bed, right? You don't want to turn it on and off. Um, and that's again where this Pico remote comes in handy. Buttons that control the lamp, we got buttons that control the light, and we can also control the fan as well, right from your bed. We also have an automation for the fan. So if the air conditioning is off and the temperature in this room rises above a certain point, at night, the fan will automatically turn on to a certain level. And then if it's too high or too low, we can always adjust it with our Pico remotes right here. So we got smart switches here. This one controls the light here. And then this one controls the garage door as well. These are again our GE. Garage door light will turn on automatically when you step out here. But the main garage lights will only turn on automatically if you get to the far end of the garage where it's a little bit darker. This is the Rashio controller for a sprinkler system. Essentially it understands the weather and so when it's gonna rain, it won't turn the sprinklers on. If it's gonna be too dry, it'll turn it on a little bit more. Chamberlain garage door, so it does, uh, has my cue, so it'll automatically shut itself at uh, certain points throughout the night. I have it set to shut at like eight and nine and 10, just in case someone leaves the garage door open, so that's, that's pretty nice. There we go, that's pretty good. I set the bar really low in the last video, so, you know. There we go. go. Yeah! 306. Good work. All right, we showed you the what and the why. Now, if you want to learn about the how, check out this video right here on the Hubitat channel. You're going to learn all about how to get these automations working in your home. Uh, detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up, what products to use, all the rules and all that. In the meantime, I'm going to learn about random acts of badassness.